we have found with our outlaws in this series that there is either a whole lot of information or very little information about who they were. Tom Smith is one of the characters in history that there was actually a whole lot of information available about him because he was involved in two of the most deadly feuds in Appalachian Mountain history. He would also be the only man to legally face the gallows in Breathitt County, Kentucky. While he is a very savory person, he was honest in his confession as he wanted to go meet his maker with a clean slate. Accused and confessed to the killing of eight men, Smith would eventually be tried, convicted, and face the gallows on June 28, 1895 for the murder of Dr. Rader. However, Smith's life was not cut and dry as a series of events would lead him to his life of crime. He would be remembered as one of the bloodiest men in the Appalachian Mountains. His story will be told by many newspaper reports, his confession, and what is written about him in the genealogy pages. We will try to give an accurate portrayal of his life as it is recorded in history. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine! Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up the time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. Who was Tom Smith? Thomas Smith was born October 13, 1859 at Troublesome Creek in Perry County, Kentucky to Richard and Mary Polly Kelly Smith. Richard Smith was a prominent minister of the area at that time. Tom Smith married Emmeline Combs on February 24, 1881 in Perry County, Kentucky. Emmeline was the daughter of George David Combs and Mary Baker. They would have several children together, Matilda Smith Combs, 1881-1960, Bud Smith, 1885-1924, Maggie Smith Fitzpatrick, 1886-1956, John Smith, 1888-1927, Cody Smith, and Edgar Smith, 1895-1975. It seems, according to the book, The Hanging of Bad Tom Smith, that he was a songwriter. He was often called upon to sing for crowds and social gatherings as he would write his own ballads and songs. According to the Yay Pot website, quote, his fame as a singer followed his infamous deeds as if the two belonged together. Even on the day of his hanging, Smith was harassed to sing for the masses gathered in Jackson. Sheriff Combs has much trouble in the jail all during Smith's last week. Scores of persons came hoping to persuade Smith to sing. Very seldom, however, in fact, his last week did Smith sing. If the crowd was in the mood for songs, Smith certainly was not. This was his last week, songs came hard. But if in a rare occasion Smith rose to sing, all in a jail hurried to his calls, standing near the bars, but not too close, unquote. Only one song was recorded shortly before he went to the gallows that he wrote and sang, but can also be found through the Yay Pot source. Quote, Don't grieve after me. First stanza. I'm going to walk through the valley in peace. I'm going to walk through the valley in peace. Oh, when I'm dead and buried, in my cold, silent tomb, I don't want you to grieve after me. Second stanza. I'm going to lay down my life for the Lord. I'm going to lay down my life for the Lord. Oh, when I'm dead and buried in my cold, silent tomb, I don't want you to grieve after me. Third stanza. I'm going to leave all my friends in peace. I am going to leave all my friends in peace. Oh, oh, when I'm dead and buried. In my cold, silent tomb, I don't want you to grieve after me. Last stanza. I don't want you to grieve after me. I don't want you to grieve after me. Oh, I am dead and buried. In my cold, silent tomb, I don't want you to grieve after me. Tom Smith. 
One has to wonder what Tom Smith's life would have been like if he had gotten his chance for fame and fortune peddling his songs instead of living the life of crime that he did. Early Life of Crime Smith's parents would die when Tom and his brother Bill were still young. When Smith was only five years old, their father, Richard, was murdered and their mother, Polly, died not long after. Orphaned and thrown to the winds of chance, both boys were shipped to any family member in eastern Kentucky that would take them in for a time. They were never settled very long in a home and given very much guidance by a parental figure. This life of rough boyhood would carry into Tom Smith's manhood. His reputation of petty larceny, delinquency, and aimless desire began to grow. Many would call him a dreamer that held no compunction to actually turn a good day's work. It is this behavior without course correction that would lead into a life of crime. The following comes from the source, the Birmingham Age Herald, Birmingham, Alabama, April 21st, 1895. It can also be found in several newspaper sources, including the Paul Tuckett Tribune, Paul Tuckett, Rhode Island, April 28th, 1895. Quote, owing to the poverty of his father, he received no education. From his earliest boyhood, he was classed among the wildest boys of the neighborhood. He possessed a daredevil nature, and he was always getting into trouble. He began stealing when a mere boy, unquote. The French ever so feud. When the fighting first began in Perry County, Kentucky, according to the Yapot source, Smith found himself with the ever so faction. They were the strongest of the two factions as they were against the tyrannical way the French faction was taking land for the coal mines. This would change early on into the feud, but his first skirmish in the feud would happen when he was only 20 years old. According to the same sources, quote, when 20 years old, he engaged in the first serious fight in town of Hazard, the county seat of Perry County. It was on election day, and several of his friends were being fired upon by their enemies. Smith had no weapons, and he began throwing stones. He knocked one man down with a large stone and secured a musket from him, with which he seriously wounded Eli Combs and several others. From that day of the fight, he seemed to have a burning desire to shed human blood, unquote. But all was not well with the relationship between the Eversoles and Smith. They would turn on him and try to have him face the gallows. It seems, according to the Wicketree website, that the Eversole faction brought in an indictment against Smith for horse theft. Evidently, Smith had stolen the horse of Joseph C. Eversole's brother-in-law, Ira Davison. It seems that several friends of Smith testified falsely that he was not guilty of the crime. Through this action, Smith was acquitted of the crime and did not go to the gallows, which was the penalty of the time. From that moment forward, Smith swore vengeance upon them. Also, according to the Wicketree website, Smith committed larceny against the Eversoles shortly after being acquitted of the crime of horse theft. James Davison, who was an Eversole man, was robbed of his watch by Smith. Davison tried to bring Smith to trial. This effort failed when Smith threatened the witnesses with death if they should testify against him. In retaliation for bringing the charges against him, Smith set fire to the house of Davison's mother. He would catch the eye of the French faction of the French Eversole feud. We will only cover the parts of the feuds that are contained in his confession as we are covering these more extensively in the Appalachian feud section. Smith was definitely a lieutenant for the French faction. While he states in his confession that he was never a hired man for Benjamin French, he did receive clothes and was given money and other things that he asked for. Many of the murders and ambushes that took place in the feud for the French faction was by the hand of Smith. In our next section of the life of Tom Smith, we will take a look at some of the murders that he had committed and confessed to. Some of these murders did go unanswered for years as he was never convicted of any of them or of the actions that he took to stay away from the gallows. Thank you. 
We at Kentucky, Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Outlaws. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notifications. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries of Appalachian history.